Katie, and today I am here with a very special guest. Oh, crap. Who's gonna fall and slide and look really cool <coughs> and awkward. Mr. Kyle. I'm back. Hello, Kyle. It was a long, <laughs> long time. time no see. So today we're gonna have friend craft time. What are we making? So I had the crazy idea that uh, I wanted to make a climbing chalk bag. Uh, I started rock climbing recently, you can buy an assortment of them, and I didn't really like any of them. Luckily for me, I have this super awesome friend that knows how to sew. So I bought a bunch of materials, <laughs> and we're going to try to make a chalk bag. They're really simple, they're basically just cylinders with the top cut off, and then you put a chalk ball inside and you put your hands on the chalk and it helps with climbing. So I wanted to design my own, because I wanted one with like a really nerdy spin on it, because I'm a huge dork. Uh, as if you've watched anything on this channel and you've seen me, that should be evident. <laughs> I bought an array of colors. Um, I have a couple ideas. Who knows how many we're actually going to get to. I would like to do a portal-themed chalk bag, and also potentially another Fallout-themed item, This, in this case a chalk bag. So we've got our blue, and we've got our yellow, and we've got some other neutral colors, black, beige. So we've got grommets be used to run the strings through so we can cinch down the bag. We have webbing for the actual belt of the bag as well as various loops and things. It's very durable. Belting. Belting. It was belting at uh, Joanne Fabri Fabrics. Uh, we have a distressed parachute buckle <laughs> because just having a black buckle wasn't good enough. We had to make it distressed. distressed. These are cord stops. You've seen these a lot on like camping gear. You basically, they have a string and paracord which we'll be using to cinch the bag shut. So, pretty simple materials. It ended up costing like $30 for way more materials than we're actually <laughs> going to need. I mean, we're gonna need like eight square inches of this stuff. And then uh, we bought fleece for the liner. So the chalk is actually, this is gonna be the inside. It's nice and soft and it doesn't, it's not abrasive on your hand. We bought everything at Joanne's. Yeah. In case you want to make your own. Shameless plug. They Shameless didn't, plug. They didn't pay us. They didn't pay us. I wish they had. But if they want to pay us in the future. We paid them. Let us know. <laughs> all right. Shall we? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Kyle and I went online to look at all the different sizes of other chalk bags that are already made. And then we used the fabric to see how big we wanted it to be. Most chalk bags are around 17 inches wide by 8 inches tall. We folded over the material and then put Kyle's hands through to make sure that it fit and make sure everything was good. We then squared off the material using a rotary cutter. You can also use scissors, it doesn't matter. I use the guide on the cutting mat if you're using scissors. Fold your black fleece in half and then sew along the edges. This will make a cylinder. We then took the cylinder and wrapped it around a bowl to see if the bowl was the correct dimensions for the bottom. We also put Kyle's hands through it to make sure that it fit properly. Then using the bowl as a guide, we traced it and cut it out. Then we pinned on the bottom of the bag. I like to pin them the wrong way first and then go back and pin them the correct way. Just it's easier to get the piece flat and then sew it down. Once it is all sewn together, it will look like this on the inside. The silhouette cameo font for Fallout is also called Overseer. We did a test print on the paper so that we would know how big it needed to be when we were cutting out our Pelham 805. We cut this to size. We then ironed the Pelham 805 onto the yellow material. Make sure to really iron this on. If you don't iron it on long enough, it'll tear in the silhouette cameo. Then we we loaded the Silhouette Cameo with the fabric cutting blade and then let it cut and then carefully pulled off the letters. Make sure to take the backing off the letters and then place them down on your ironing board where you want them to go and then iron them on. 
I asked Kyle to use straight letters. That way you could do a straight stitch down the side of them. If he, would, if he picked more complicated ones, like a three or an eight, you're gonna have to do a lot more sewing. So just keep that in mind when picking out letters. Now we repeated the same process again with the bowl on the blue fabric. And then in the canvas material, we cut using pinking scissors. I like to call these waffle scissors. You can also find these at Joann's. These just help so that the material won't fray. And we cut a little hole where we wanted the grommet to go. Kyle chose a smaller size grommet. I would definitely choose a size bigger because this thing was a struggle to get through the hole. It was a struggle to put on. Um, it took us maybe 10 minutes just to get this one piece, but then when we clamped it down, it worked out really well. When we clamped it down, it looked really good. Oh, and then we realized the bottom of the bag is actually supposed to be made out of yellow, not blue, so we repeated the process and got a good laugh. We folded over the blue material and sewed along the edge. Here's what the yellow looks like attached to the blue, and we've got the fleece lining. The fleece lining is actually going to go in inside out because you want the correct side to be what you touch from the top. We've got our paracord loop through. I pinned I pinned the fleece lining to the material and then started sewing along it just to kind of hold it in. We're going to do a yellow binding at the top. Our yellow binding is about an inch and a half thick. We made the binding out of the same canvas material and then I'm going to sew once along the top of the material and then along the in inside of the material just to hold it down. For the webbing, we burn the edges using a lighter. This is so that the material does not fray. And then we sewed two loops across the top to hold the webbing on. And then we sewed the webbing into a belt so that it can be belted across. And we're back with our final product. We did it, it, wor it works. This was much easier than I think both of us thought it was gonna be. We, I mean, we, we had a basic idea of how it needed to go together, and we really ran into very few complications. We had minor problems where stitching got really thick, but it wasn't like really that big of a deal. But everything went together basically as it should have. <laughs> it wasn't, it's not like it was a super complicated thing to build. Um, but you were worried. Well, you always do these you projects. You always do these projects and you run into things that you weren't really anticipating. Of course, we were in the store and Katie said that that grommet is too small, and I said, no, it's not, and it was. Uh, so I got it through, and it's a nice tight fit. Difficult? It was tricky. It was. <laughs> it required much problem solving and just a little bit of swearing. It was difficult in the grommet, and it was also difficult through the cord, uh, cord stop. The cord stop. Possible. Not, not impossible, just very <laughs> difficult. Otherwise, it functions perfectly good, it built well, it sends the, it, it's the aesthetic, basically exactly how I wanted it. I really couldn't have asked for anything better. Didn't have any time to do any of the others that we had planned. Those will be for next time. Was pretty much to be expected though. Now that we know what we're doing, the next ones will be quicker. How long do you think it took us to make it? It took us about five hours, but there was a lot of trial and error, other production stuff, like us filming. <laughs> I think if we made it again, it might take Maybe one hour, maybe two hours. Two. I mean, it, we've we've already sunk a little bit of time into the next one, but we had problems with the silhouette and some of the materials we purchased yes. weren't they weren't cooperating. Really, I think you could do another one in like two hours. Yeah. Once you once you do one and you kind of know how it goes together, I mean, we could with the two of us, we could basically production line the next one. We know how big everything needs to be. The next one would be real quick to make. Because I think the most time consuming in general yeah. would be any of the designs. So it yeah. depends how complicated your design is. Because the rest of it really is, it's a cylinder. Yeah. How do you like the fleece lining? I, we'll see how it works. I think it'll be, I think it'll work great. Yeah, we couldn't, ah. none of these were like, we saw ones, other examples that were like sharks and things, so. I wanted him to make the shark, but he wanted to make the fallout one. I know, I just like the color scheme. That's really what it boils <gasps> down to. 
Are you gonna wear your Fallout outfit with the chalk bag? That, that is the real question. That would give me some really funny looks. I don't think so. You, why not? I mm, would you wear it at like a convention? This? What do you think? Yeah. Probably not. Why not? You it's might, a chalk bag. Why, I'm not why climbing not? on anybody. If I'm climbing no on things, that, if I'm climbing on convention tables, uh, that's a really good way to get kicked out. Okay. No climbing on the convention table. Yeah, we're not going to do that. It's not allowed. But who knows? Maybe one day we'll combine the two. If you would like to see our video on how we made the cosplay outfit for Fallout, you can click the chalk bag or on Kyle's face right now. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to know when we make more crazy videos, hit the big subscribe subscribe button subscribe button yeah. subscribe button subscribe subscribe we'll do thanks for watching thanks for watching bye guys